it's the Van Show! Welcome, welcome, welcome! And today, 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 we are so excited because we have the very... The, 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 I'm stumbling over my words, I'm so excited! <laughs> Selena Gonzalez, say hello, yeah. Selena. Hello, Ben. How are you? Hello, Fernie. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're so happy to have you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, yeah? Yes. I see you wore your light blue uh, sweater just just for me, I see. Yeah, I just to match you. I got this in I got this in China recently. Aww. Very nice. You, all, you took a trip to China? I did. I used to live there. I was a librarian there for a couple of years. We want to talk about your art. You're yeah. an artist. Yeah, I am. And I want to hear about it. So tell us, when did you realize that making art was something that you really wanted to do? Uh, pretty early on, I was a person who didn't, I didn't enjoy TV as much as my, my sibling did. I, um, I liked the outdoors. I enjoyed creating stuff. And my sister, Sochil, that's the reason I have an X name is because she does. Um, she created some poetry at school and I really wanted to mimic that. So I wrote a poem. You might like this, Ben. I wrote a poem about a fat cat named that and it <laughs> went on and on. And I um, and I typed it up on my mom's typewriter and she helped me uh, staple it and make a little book and I did the drawings. Aww. So um, I love that. And I, I went to school for journalism because I figured that was a way to be a writer, but early on, I um, I really enjoyed profiles and interviews, and I realized that I didn't really want to be celebrity chasing because that's part of what this magazine did. I, j I enjoyed the conversation so much, I knew that I was a creator as well and uh, wanted to be a part of that dialogue. Very yeah. cool. And so when when was it that that you finally got around to like like writing your first book? Okay, so I had always written written things, uh, written creative writing, even when I was a journalist. Um, but I think when I finally submitted was um, I was I had already been a public librarian and a school librarian, oh. and I remember the conversations about needing diverse books and diverse voices in the publishing field. And as a librarian or a library student at the time. I, um, I remember really promoting that and thinking like, yeah, well, we just need we just need more people putting their stories out there or their art out there. And I finally had to ask myself, like, OK, what are you waiting for yeah. as a creative person? Like throw your hat in the ring. And so I did. And I did that alongside my friend who's a muralist. Um, we sort of came in the back door through publishing. We made our project together first. And, uh, and had a small press in Texas called Cinco Puntos. They took a chance on us doing this book together. Cool. And now we're three books later, so, oh, and so it worked so, out. And, and so you've had the same illustrator for all your books? All three books, yes. I have a new illustrator for an upcoming project, but my three picture books are all by, are all illustrated by Adriana M. Garcia. Uh, who's, I love uh, that. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. So, so now I want to ask, uh, and, and only because, it's, it's the most common story I've heard from every artist, not just author, but illustrator and musician and everything else, is that when they got started, when they were like, finally, like, I'm taking this seriously, I want to do this for a career, they got a lot of rejection letters. Now, oh. now was this your story, or are you one of the unicorns that sent it out and first time they were like, Poof, nope, you're, you're published? <laughs> I guess... I guess a, a bit of a unicorn and wow. <laughs> hey. a little bit, yeah. Um, only because it's kind of unheard of to get to work with your friend first of all, and then uh, and then that book did well. And the best part about that was they said, "What story do you want to tell next?" Which uh -huh. is where Wonder grows. And then each of the books have won some awards and things of that sort. But I will say that. With that question, what story do you want to tell next? There have been rejections along that way. So that's surprising to some people. I think they think once you have a story that's done well, then everything is a yes after yeah. that. And that's not the case. So even though we've had a ton of luck along the way, there's still plenty of rejection. And I, yeah. I think that's really important because mm -hmm. that is something that gets left out of the conversation when people are like, yeah, I got 50 rejections, but then I got that one, that one yes, mm -hmm. and then I published like 25 books. And, and they, they don't talk about, in those 25 books, there were probably more rejections. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, uh, that, 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 it, that it doesn't just stop once you get that first yes. Exactly, yeah, it keeps going. You gotta get used to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, the tough skin and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's also not a job that you can, 
that you can apply for and have a steady paycheck amidst the rejections and the triumphs. Like sure. you're sort of always worrying about keeping yourself afloat as an independent artist or a freelance writer, whatever you may call it. It's it's a tough gig, oh, but yeah. uh, one full of freedom, and and I enjoy that. So so um, you brought some books with you. I did. Can you tell us a little bit about the books that you brought? Absolutely. So this is where Wonder Grows, and I don't have the bling on here, but this one received the Pura Belpre gold medal hey. for best illustration. Should I open it? Is that okay? Yeah, let's take a look. Want to see some of it? So this was uh, our second book, and this was published with. Lee and Lo. So they actually bought Cinco Pundos. That became an imprint of, of Lee and Lo. And so they sort of adopted us because this book was at the printer when, um, when COVID hit. And so our small press in Texas didn't, didn't quite make it. And uh, this is, um, as I've been told, this is the first time a temazcal or a sweat lodge has been shown in a picture book. So Whoa. I think that's pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, something, a fun fact also is that my first two books are, uh, because they're illustrated by my friend Adriana, my nieces and my daughter and my mom and my dad, my family is pictured in these books. <laughs> so they're extra special to me yeah. for that reason. So now I read that you teach Tai Chi storytelling. Oh, yeah. Yes. And I'd like to know what is Tai Chi storytelling? Okay, so that's the name that we tend to call it here in the U.S. But if you know in Guangzhou, you might have heard the word uh, Qi in China, right? Yeah. So it's actually called Qigong, right? Or here we call it Tai Chi. But Qi means energy. Right. Yeah, so Qi is energy. And so the idea of Qigong is the movement of energy, right? And we move it with our breath. And so the practice of it allows us to flow the energy in our body in a different way and the energy that exists around us in a different way. So because I, I was a librarian in China, at the time my first book came out, I wanted a way to um, introduce my story to my readers there, to my, the kids in my library. And so I incorporated a lot of music and movement because I found in my practice as a public librarian that music and movement really help celebrate the story and yeah. it allows participants to embody the story in a different way. So I'd heard of yoga story time. So I said, mm, what about Qigong story yeah. time right? or Tai Chi story time? So our first book, the main uh, focus there was circles. So we move in circles and we move with our breath, right? And so you can try it with one hand if you're able to. You can inhale yeah and exhale and drop your head yeah just like that so in one of the scenes we're pulling vegetables and planting flowers yeah doesn't that feel good <laughs> oh my goodness i love this Isn't i feel nice? the chingong <laughs> it's flowing yeah. through me it mm -hmm. feels good doesn't it yeah so the game we're gonna play is truth or dare <gasps> uh oh <laughs> should i be scared for any <laughs> oh, oh, don't listen to Fernie. It's okay. fine. You'll be fine. All right. Let's do it. Well, you have to pick. You, you, oh. you choose. Oh, okay. Dare. Ooh. Dare. Okay, let's see. Okay, all right. I got it. Okay. We're going to play a game uh -huh. called Fortunately, Unfortunately. Okay. So, I'll start by saying something fortunate that happened to me, and then you will respond with, yeah, but something unfortunately happened, and then and then I'm gonna go back with something fortunately, and we'll go back and forth. Okay, that might be a challenge for me. I'm a bit of an optimist, but I'll try. All right, all right. All we right. gotta put on your pessimist hat for this I one. I accept your dare. All right. <clears throat> so, <laughs> oh my goodness. Fortunately, you wouldn't believe this. You wouldn't believe this, but I just won an award at school today. Unfortunately, your award fell in a puddle on your walk out of school. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, but fortunately, mm -hmm. the award was made out of plastic and didn't didn't get wet. But unfortunately, plastic is so bad for the environment that you lost that environmental award. Uh, oh, wait, wait, oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. But fortunately, uh -huh. it was recycled plastic. And so they, they were saying, they, the, the environmental ward people said, that's fine. Unfortunately, as soon as you found it, another kid came by on a bike and swooped it out of your <gasps> hands. But fortunately, that kid got a flat tire and dropped the, 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 the award the, just a few feet away and I was able to pick it up easily. 
Unfortunately, you realize that the culprit was your brother, and why did your brother steal something from you? Oh my goodness. I know. But but fortunately, uh, oh, oh, fortunately, my, my brother was, was, was estranged, and this was the first time I'd seen him in 20 <laughs> years. It was so exciting. Unfortunately, he still had his pummeling ways and wanted to wrestle with you as soon as you got back from school. Oh no. Oh, yeah. oh wait a minute. But fortunately, I go to wrestling school, and so I was easily defeated him. Unfortunately, you've gotten so such big muscles so quickly that your wrestling outfit snapped, and then you were naked. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to end it there. <laughs> naked in the street with a plastic award. I try. I try. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. So then, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Ben. That was fun. Thank you, Fernie. Wow, my mouth. Oh, yeah? My mouth. Oh, Fernie said you're his favorite. Oh, yay. Aww. Thanks, Fernie. Goodbye. Bye.